all right welcome uh, so today we'll be dealing with some of the typical animal nutrition questions uh, let's get right straight into it so we have question 2.1 2.1.1 we have two diagrams uh, diagram 1 and diagram 2 um, the first question 2.1.1 says uh, name the farm animals whose alimentary canals are represented in diagram 1 and diagram 2 so normally um in, in some cases we have learners who do not who, who actually know the answers to this question but they don't know which one to to actually provide for this type of question so in this context what i mean is that learners do not know whether they should actually name the farm animal or state whether the animal is a ruminant or a non-ruminant but in this case they say name the farm animals whose alimentary canals are represented in diagram one so in diagram one you can see already that um we have a fowl you can see by this uh, crop here you can see the proventriculars you can see the gizzard all of that so this is a fowl so when you when you name it you can see either a fowl or um, a chicken so because now they asked us to what to name to name the farm animals so in diagram two we can say we have a cattle um we can say it's a cattle or a goat uh, a goat or we can say it's a we can say it's a sheep why are we saying this because you can see that this is a ruminant uh, type of stomach it is four compartments now this is how we go about it then on the next uh, question paper we'll be able to look at the type of question where they are actually requiring you to provide whether the animal is a, a ruminant or a non-ruminant but in this case they were asking you to name the farm animal whether it's a fowl or a cattle now in question 2.1.2 .2, you are asked to identify the part in diagram one where each of the following occurs now you only write uh, only the letters a to d as i've said a a this part a is a um, this is a crop then part b is um this will be our proven proventriculus then uh, the gizzard right so that's part um that's part d sorry sorry that's part c now let's look at the part where digestive juices are secreted digestive juices are, are secreted in the proventriculus so it's going to be part b mechanical digestion we know that mechanical digestion occurs in um, part c in the gizzard now the food is moistened and softened food is moistened and softened in the crop so we'll have part a b c and a now let's have a look at um, the next question so now the f next question is asking us to name the adaptations of part g in diagram two uh which in a which enables the animal to digest feed rich in fiber but now what do we mean by adaptations so i'm going to give you um a, an example let's say we have a hand we have a hand right hopefully we don't have six fingers here <laughs> right um so if i ask you a question because now we're trying to understand the meaning of adaptation um so we're trying to contextualize it so let's say we have a hand and the hand is um uh, holding a microphone now the question asked what are some of the adaptations of this hand that enable the hand to hold the mic well you're gonna say okay first of all the hand has a palm and also it has um uh fingers these are the adaptations that help that enable the hand to actually hold the mic the 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 the, 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 the mic is placed against the palm and the fingers 
uh, actually help to grip to to hold the 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 mic a grip. So now, when it comes to the adaptations uh, in diagram two, diagram two we know this is a ruminant. Then part G we know this is the largest compartment. Part G here you can see is the largest compartment of this stomach, and we know the largest compartment is the ruminant. Uh, I mean the rumen. Now, what are the adaptations of the rumen that enable it to digest feed? We know that the rumen has what we call those finger-like projections called papillae. It has uh, papillae. You know, we all know that uh, papillae acts, uh, act as uh, heating rods. It has large... It has large fermentation. It has large fermentation vessels. Sorry about this. Um, I couldn't uh, finish writing this down, but it's mainly just it's just fermentation vessels. It has large fermentation vessels. So some these are some of the uh, um, adaptations that en enable the, um, the 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 rumen to digest feed rich in fiber all right so on this next question we're looking at um, another misconception well which also is part of the misconception that i was explaining earlier on that uh, most learners do not know whether they should state if this is a, a ruminant or non-ruminant or they should name the farm animal whether it is a cattle or a fowl so in this case we're going to look at at a question where they actually require you to um, indicate whether it's a ruminant or non-ruminant so let's look at 2.1.1 where we'll be referring to diagram one i mean diagram a and diagram two so 2.1.1 plus it says uh classify the two animals represented by diagram one and diagram b classify not name it's not asking you to name nothing they're asking you to classify so they're asking us to do it to classify the two animals represented uh, in the diagrams classify not name because you remember in the previous question that we asked to name not classify name so on this one we're being asked to classify the two farm animals so you're going to state if you look at diagram a you'll see that this animal has four compartments now this one when we classify it it's going to fall under a ruminant a, a ruminant and then if you look at diagram b it is a simple stomach only one uh, stomach it is monogastric so this one is a non rumi a non ruminant a non ruminant so 2.1.2 it says name two adaptation features of the animal in diagram a that in, that enables uh, it to survive by feeding primarily on hay now it will only uh, survive primarily on a because of these adaptations the following adaptations is that it has large fermentation vessels it is large uh, fermentation vessels so what we mean by fermentation is that it uh it is able to uh quickly uh dissolve or digest or just uh change the the food particles from one form to another in 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 a short period of time due to these fermentation vessels so another one is um we'll be looking at the presence of micro or microorganisms these are some of the features i think we talked about this in the previous uh question now on 2.1.3 it says give a reason why the animal in diagram b cannot be fed a ration that is high in crude fiber content why it cannot be fed a ration that is high in crude uh, fiber content you remember that uh, cr crude fiber is not easily digestible so it is not suitable for non ruminants so the reason why the animal in diagram b cannot be fed uh, feed high in, in, 
uh, high in crude fiber is that it is uh, monogastric. It is monogastric. It is mono. It is monogastric. It has only one stomach or just a simple stomach. Now we may give another reason is that it does not have microorganisms. Um, So the absence of microorganisms. When we say something is absent, that means it's not the so absence of uh, microorganisms. Right now, the last question, two point one point four, says that explain how the animal in diagram A benefits from the consumption of non-protein nitrogenous substances. That's uh, and PNN. So non-protein nitrogenous substances such as urea so a good explanation is that how it really benefits is that um, the secretion of uh, ures that changes urea into ammonia which is used so synthesize microbial protein that is later broken down into amino acids so how it really benefits from urea is that uh, um, the, the the urea is changed into ammonia which will later be used ammonia will then be used to synthesize uh, microbial protein that is later broken into amino acids so that's basically how it benefits from uh, consuming uh, um, consuming non-protein nitrogenous substances like urea